Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Kitty and I'm an academic doctor working in the UK. Recently, I've successfully applied to an ACF ST1 post or the Academic Clinical Fellow post in vascular surgery to start following my F2 year. Today, we'll be looking at the ACF interview format and then breaking this down and looking at the individual components of the interview, which are all timestamped, of course, for your convenience. If you don't know what the ACF post is and what it entails, check out my previous video explaining the basics and overview of the application process. So the first thing to know is that the ACF interview format is actually quite predictable these days since it is somewhat standardised by the NIHR or the National Institute for Health and Care Research, the funding body for academic training in the UK. The interviews are around 30 minutes long and the interview panels tends to consist of the lead of the ACF training programme, another clinician or clinical academic in that specialty, the training programme director or TPD, an external academic, a lay person and an administrative staff to time the interview. The panel size may vary based on the location and the specific post that you're applying for. So often ACF posts of a theme open to multiple specialty applicants may have several clinicians from different specialties, whilst a specialty based ACF post might have a more focused panel. When I did my interview, I had all five interviewers as listed here, but the NIHR only mandates at least three interviewers with an academic, a clinical representative and a lay person. Top tip here, it is always worth trying to find out who's going to be on your interview panel if you can, so you can familiarise yourself with their research areas and expertise. For example, I had initially prepared some recent research and trials in vascular surgery to talk about, but I then found out actually one of the main authors of the trial was going to be interviewing me, so I just reshaped what I was going to say. In terms of the interview content, unlike the AFP or the SFP, the ACF interview is completely academic focused and there's no clinical or management components. Broadly speaking, the questions are designed to test you on critical appraisal and data interpretation, looking at your research experience and knowledge of recent research, as well as your understanding and plans for the ACF post. Examples of these questions and their marking criteria for positive and negative indicators are actually available on the NIHR website, which we will go through in turn shortly. Although these are only meant as a guide, many ACF programs have actually asked the same questions pretty much verbatim, which they didn't mind, so it is definitely worth having a prepared answer for each one. Generally, a good rule of thumb is to prepare an answer that lasts around 2-3 to three minutes maximum. A guaranteed part of the ACF interview is critical appraisal and data interpretation. You're usually given an abstract or selected excerpts of a paper, along with some data figures like a forest plot or a box plot or a survival curve, and often this may be uh, related to a randomised controlled trial, but other types of studies can also be picked. This is usually given to you either the day before or on the day with 10 minutes to read and prepare. Alternatively, some academic deaneries may ask you to prepare your own paper to bring to the interview to discuss. You will then be asked to summarise and present the findings of the paper and you can see the corresponding NIHR marking criteria here. The best way to approach this, I think, is to use the PICO format to go through the paper and summarise the key findings. You may then be asked follow-up questions specific to the methodology of the findings, as well as explaining the data figures. So for example, what is a box plot? Uh, what is a forest plot? And you need to be familiar with basic statistical terms such as p-values, 95% confidence interval, survival analysis, power calculations, and be able to interpret the data. You may also be asked to appraise the strengths and weaknesses of the presented paper as well. Another key component of the critical appraisal is to be able to explain the results to a lay person. And this is another almost guaranteed question and test your ability to put scientific results in a clinical context and be able to explain this without medical jargon as you would to a patient in a clinical setting. I'm not really going to go into how you do a critical appraisal here or details about statistical terms since I assume you would have had some experience of that if you're applying to the ACF in the first place. But if you want to see how I would approach a paper, you can have a look at the critical appraisal video that I made for the Academic or Specialised Foundation programme as uh, it's not changed significantly. The best way I think to prepare for the critical appraisal station is to read lots of papers before your interview and practice giving yourself 10 minutes to prepare and present the data. I personally also found a friend who was preparing for the ACF interview in another specialty and we gave each other papers to read. And this had three benefits in that A, we could practice uh, doing critical appraisal and presenting to each other. Uh, we were increasing our breadth and reading of our recent research that we can mention in our interview if needed. And thirdly, we can bounce ideas off of each other about critically appraising different types of studies as well, which is very important. Inevitably, in your ACF interview, you will be asked about your academic achievements. 
Looking at the NIHR marking criteria here, these are pretty standard measures for academic output like degrees, publications, prizes, posters, presentations, projects that you've completed, um, and having done an academic or specialised foundation programme is usually also looked at favourably. The answer to this question is almost similar to your white space question, where you want to summarise your research outputs and achievements without going into too much detail about individual projects. Make sure you try to address each of these categories in your answer as well, and you can include any formal teaching on research methodology that you've had. Another question that falls into this category is describing your practical experience of research, which focuses more on your understanding of how research con is conducted in terms of the methodology, funding, and other challenges like patients and public involvement or PPI. For this question, you want to focus on the practical skills you've gained from research and try to convey the breadth of experience you've had if possible, particularly in regards to research methodology. For example, I talked about my experience in completing systematic reviews, cohort studies, survey work, as well as lab-based scientific work. I didn't have to go into detail about any of these projects at this point, but the breadth of my experience came across well. I was then later asked to expand on any particular project that's been special or made the most impact, so you should also be prepared to discuss your previous work in detail as well. Patients and public involvement, or PPI, is another key component you should try to address because it's a huge brownie points topic to acknowledge um, in terms of the importance of addressing public interest when designing research projects. For example, I was part of the James Lind Alliance priority setting project where we held conversations with patients with lived experience to determine the research priorities in amputation research. Alternatively, um, if you've had some experience in recruiting patients into trials or studies, or considering how the study design will address public interest, it's also a good example of PPI. Thirdly, you'll likely be asked about why you want the particular ACF post and what specific research interests you. Here's your opportunity to show that you've really done your homework and given some thought as to what you want to do with your three years of ACF post if you're successful. The positive indicators here says that to score strongly, you should have knowledge of the area of endeavour, knowledge of local expertise, appropriate ideas for a possible project, understanding of relevant methodology, and understanding of the research theme. For this question, the interviewers are not looking for you to have a completed project plan that's ready to go to occupy you for the next three years. Instead, they want you to show that you have good academic reasons to apply for this particular post and that you are keen to develop further research in your area of interest. In preparation for this, it is almost essential that you try to speak to the academic special lead of the post that you're applying to, or make some contact with the department to understand where their academic focus lies and how this aligns with your research interests. They may even have some ideas already for what an ACF can do in the department, uh, since that's why they probably created the job. Um, and you can also think about how your previous research experience and achievements will help you to complete a planned project or answer a research question. Read about the desirable criteria of this specific post and think about what skills you can bring to the table as well. You may also be asked if you prefer any particular type of research, such as quantitative versus qualitative research, lab-based versus clinical research, um, personally, I had some ideas about what I liked and disliked, but for many of us in this kind of early stage of our career, it is unlikely that you would have already developed a hyper-specialised focus in a research topic or a type of research. So just be honest here about what you've done so far, um, if you enjoyed it, how you found it, was there any particular challenges that you didn't like? Another common question in the ACF interview is whether you could share academic research both within and outside your immediate area of interest to demonstrate your engagement with the wider academic community and awareness of other large impactful research. To score highly, the NIHR criteria also suggests that you should be able to identify the relevance of the study to your own area of interest, appreciate the methodology that's used, and be able to discuss their strengths and weaknesses and limitations and why or why not. Uh, in terms of whether you apply it to your clinical practice. For this, you basically just want to have a high level of exposure to high quality publications for a couple of weeks or months before you interview. So I basically subscribed myself to various high impact journals like the NEJM and the BMJ, so I would get newsletter emails about new publications. Obviously, you should also keep an eye uh, for significant recent publications in your own specialty as well and be prepared to discuss this. Something that I found useful whilst preparing for this was that there were several websites online that compiled a compendium of landmark papers in medical practice, and they sort of act as like an online journal club, such as the Wiki Journal Club and a website called The Bottom Line, and they outline significant publications quite well and actually give you a place to start in critical appraisal as well. 
There are also other websites which are specialty specific for like ITU or ED or whatever um, that have a journal club section as well, which looks at more recently published papers. Personally, for my interview in December 21, I picked a trial called HALTIT, which was an RCT looking at the use of tranexamic acid in GI bleeds. And I essentially presented it in a PICO format, and I picked one or two methodological links and weaknesses to discuss and whether it would change my practice. I then related this to my specialty as I knew that the use of tranexamic acid um, in vascular surgery was still unclear. And this research question will be partly addressed in an upcoming large POIS-3 randomized trial. An alternative approach that you can take is to discuss the research methodology of the paper and how this can be applied to research in general. And this is uh, an approach that a lot of my colleagues take, uh, took, particularly if there was no obvious link between the study and their field of interest. Uh, following this, my interviewers then sprang some questions on me about uh, COVID research and the recovery trials. So just be aware that any kind of contemporary research topic is basically fair game for the ACF. So that's why you need to subscribe to channels and just keep reading around. Finally, the NIHR wants to assess the candidate's ability to balance their clinical and academic careers. After all, you are expected to complete your clinical competencies with only 75% of clinical time compared to someone else on a clinical pathway. And there are, of course, lots of external pressures for research outputs and funding with an academic career, not to mention the difficulties with rotor management to make sure you get your protected academic time that you need in the first place. So the marking criteria in this case is actually quite clear and you just need to make sure that you're hitting all the key points in your answers and, and you know, saying all the trigger words. So this includes things like having time management and prioritization skills, being organized, recognizing the need to protect your academic time, working with your supervisors to ensure that this is given. If you have already done some academic work or the academic or specialized foundation program, you can mention how you've already shown your ability to balance clinical and academic work here. For my answer, uh, in addition to kind of academic achievements, I also focused on any recognition for my clinical acumen and clinical skills to demonstrate my ability to be a good clinician and taking proactive steps towards training as a vascular surgeon, for example, passing the MLCS Part A. So those are the main areas and questions that you can be expected to be asked in an ACF interview. For my interview and many of my colleagues who have applied to different ACF posts, we've all found that actually many of these questions will be asked verbatim and often followed up by other kind of discussion points. In preparation for the interview, I've also prepared some answers for more kind of standard generic interview questions like why I wanted to do vascular surgery, why I wanted to be in Bristol, etc. But I didn't get any particularly sort of left field questions. A good interview book to go over these generic questions is the medical interview books that absolutely everyone has. Um, and with these prepared answers, I then had mock interviews with around seven other academics at different stages of training, so ACFs, lecturers, and a consultant to further kind of shape and tighten up my answers. And I found this to be an adequate preparation for the interview. On the day, I did have some unexpected questions, so such as being grilled about the COVID trials, but overall, I enjoyed the experience and I felt that I had a prepared answer to most of the questions that were asked. So in summary, my top tips for the ACF interview are find out who's going to be on the interview panel, prepare a two to three minute answer to all the questions on the NIHR website, talk to the academic department of the post beforehand, know the eligibility and desirable criteria for the job, be prepared to discuss your CV broadly and also specifically on projects that you've done in the past. Subscribe to some journal newsletters and read widely, particularly any hot topics. And practice with as many academics as you can, as any feedback at this stage is extremely helpful. And that's it for this video on the ACF interview process. I hope that you found this useful. If you did, a thumbs up would be very much appreciated. And make sure you subscribe for more future content, including my application to Core Surgical Training or CST. If you have any particular questions you want me to answer, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll either try to reply directly or include this in a future video. That's it for now, take care, see you next time.